Hello and welcome to this uh, lecture in the course for Secure Systems uh, Engineering. Uh, so in the previous video lectures we had looked at uh, two attacks on Meltdown and also we looked at Spectre. Uh, there is another variant of Spectre known as uh, the variant 2. Uh, in this video we will look at uh, this second variant of Spectre. Again uh, as we have seen previously uh, this variant is also uh, based on the speculative execution uh, which is present in modern uh, processors and uh, it exploits this speculative execution in order to glean secret information out of another process. So the setup in the variant 2 is as follows, uh, we have a victim's address space. Uh, so this is an the process address space of the victim and uh, uh, what we assume is that there is some portions uh, within this pr process uh, space which has some secret data. So what the uh, attacker wants to do is that uh, the attacker wants to actually obtain uh, this secret data using uh, the spectre attack. So the first thing that is done is that the attacker would identify two regions in the code. So uh, one it has an indirect jump based on a register value as shown over here and this jump uh, is to some specific uh, spectre gadget which is present in the user's uh, victim's user address space. So this gadget comprises of a few instructions that essentially would load into a register the contents of this secret information. So what we see is that uh, uh, the attacker wants to utilize this indirect jump uh, to this gadget and this gadget has instructions such as XOR AND and something like that followed by a load instruction which loads the secret data uh, into a register. So in order to mount a spectre a variant 2 attack uh, what the attacker does is he creates his own attack program with a user space as follows. So the um, attacker would first uh, uh, create an instruction over here which has some indirect branch. So note that this uh, address or the address of this particular location is exactly identical uh, to the indirect branch present in the victim's address space. So also what is assumed is the attacker knows the address of uh, some gadget and uh, in his own address space replaces this area with a return. So now what he does is that uh, on the same processor that is executing this victim's process, the attacker would run this uh, uh, attack program. So therefore, what would happen over here is repeatedly the attacker would uh, make these indirect branches which then uh, jumps to this uh, region of memory and uh, uh, he keeps doing this in a loop. Internally what happens is that uh, the attacker is training the branch predictor that the next instruction following this indirect branch is the return instruction. So the branch predictor uh, based on its learning mechanisms like the thing like we have seen before would uh, uh, then be able to automatically start fetching data from this uh, region and speculatively execute the instructions present in this region. The vulnerability in the processor is that the branch predictor uh, only looks at the virtual addresses uh, in an address space and uh, is not able to separate uh, the virtual address of one process from an other process. Thus, when uh, this branch uh, in the victim also executes, the branch predictor would look up its uh, branch target buffer and it would find that the next address to be executed corresponds to this address and it would start to speculatively execute this. So uh, recall that this gadget which is present in the victim's address space uh, is actually having some operations like uh, add XOR or something followed by a load operation which would speculatively load secret data uh, from the victim's address space into a register. And during this process uh, as we have seen in the earlier videos uh, the contents of the secret data would be uh, present uh, in the cache or would modify the cache state and therefore techniques like the time required for a cache hit and cache miss can be used and therefore techniques like the time required for a cache hit and cache miss uh, can be used to identify what the secret data is. 
Thus, what we have seen over here is that in this variant 2, the attacker using a completely isolated uh, process is able to craft uh, a particular indirect branch in his own address space and train the branch predictor in the processor to speculatively execute. Now, since uh, this speculation would force secret data to be loaded into a register, uh, which can then be uh, used to retrieve information about the contents of the victim's address space. So, uh, in the last year, there have been a, a lot of uh, different countermeasures that have been developed for uh, Meltdown and Spectre. One important thing to actually prevent meltdown was based on restructuring the operating system uh, address space. So, uh, in the general practice prior to 2018, the user and kernel space was arranged in this particular way. So, we had uh, this as the virtual address space for a process. It was divided into two regions. Uh, one was the user space uh, up to a certain memory location and beyond that memory location uh, was the kernel space. So, for example, uh, in a 32-bit Linux system, uh, this uh, boundary was at a location 0 x c uh, followed by 7 zeros. Below this location was the user space and above this location was the kernel space. Now, the meltdown attack worked because a user space program could exploit the speculative behavior of the processor to be able to read uh, contents of the kernel space. The countermeasure for this was known as uh, KPTI or kernel page table isolation. Uh, in fact, there were uh, two sets of page tables, one known, uh, one which was activated in the user mode, the other in the kernel mode. So, in the user mode, the entire uh, page tables that map uh, to the kernel code uh, was not present. Only a small stub uh, for the kernel space was present. So, whenever the user space program invokes a system call, it would be first trapped into this kernel space, which would then uh, shift mode to the kernel mode and map the entire kernel space into the region. Similarly, on return from the system call, the uh, virtual space would go back uh, into this user mode. Now, if a meltdown type of attack was actually utilized, uh, it has to be done from the user space and therefore would not be able to actually read any of the kernel space memory because the kernel space memory is not mapped in this particular mode. The other techniques that were uh, suggested uh, for the Spectre first variant was compiler patches, uh, which uses barriers such as the Elfens uh, instruction to prevent speculation. So, the Elfens instruction is supported by uh, x86 processors, which is used to actually sequentialize execution. So, the Elfens uh, uh, instruction would therefore prevent any speculation uh, beyond that instruction. Uh, in order to prevent uh, variant 2, suggestions were made to have different branch target buffers uh, present uh, in the branch predictor unit. Each branch target buffer would cater to a single process. So, for example, if uh, we had a processor with uh, hyperthreading supported, simultaneously two SMT threads, then there would be uh, two separate uh, BTBs that are present. So, uh, this would imply that uh, the Spectre variant 2 will not work because each process or each thread uh, which is running simultaneously uh, would be using its own uh, BTB and therefore, uh, the attacks were uh, one uh, prediction in one thread affecting uh, speculative execution in another thread will not happen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.